Hello and welcome to Wagered on Tilt. I am T and today I want to go through a Markov chain. So a Markov chain is a way that you can track and estimate when a transition of a state will occur. Now I know that sounds complex, but in this example, we're going to use basketball. So now when you're doing this, you can use this for any sport really, but we're going to again focus on basketball. Now transition of states means transitions of positions or alignments. So one thing you could think about is does the team have the ball? Did they take a two point shot? Did they take a three point shot? Did they have a turnover? Does the opponent have the ball? Did the opponent take a two point? Did the opponent take a three point? Did the opponent lose the ball? Those are all transitions of state and things can happen once you're in a certain state, right? So if the opponent has the ball, it is not possible for me to score a point because they have the ball. So a state transition must occur first, meaning that I must get possession of the ball. Therefore, they must turn it over in which then I now have the ball. So that is two transitions, right? So we have the one, the opponent turns over the ball. The second state being I now have the ball. Then the third state could be a shot or I pass or I turn it back over to them. So we're going to go through how you can do this in Microsoft Excel. You can also do this in Google Sheets. Now this is a very useful tool. You can do this in Python, but I'm not going to cover how to do the code today. But using this, you can do different things for prop betting, first half, first quarter, things like that. Now the version that I'm going to show is very simplistic. Please do not use this exact model to try and beat a book. It will not beat a book. But if you use the correct probabilities and actually try and manipulate this a little bit and massage it, you're going to end up getting a pretty useful model, especially for trying to do certain types of predictions. Now, again, I wouldn't use this for every single thing, but it is useful for where you could have states transitioning pretty quickly. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet. So as I said in the beginning of the video, we have a thing called a transition, right? So if I am in possession of the ball, certain things can happen and those things can occur in certain types of probabilities. Now to come up with those probabilities, you can just look those up or you can try and use Bayesian statistics or anything you want to come up with those probabilities. So if we have a possession, right? So team A has the ball. They have a couple of things that they can do. They can take a two point shot. They can take a three point shot or they could have a turnover. Now, usually you'll want to go ahead and include something in here that also is for they maintain possession right? That could have been a pass or something like that. But for the simplified version, we're just going to say the possible outcomes that you can have are that you have the ball, you took a two point, you took a three point, or you turned it over. We'll also then include the opponent's information, right? The opponent has the ball, the opponent took a two point, the opponent took a three point, or the opponent turned it over. Now the way that this table works is that you're going to try and basically map out what could happen based upon the row and column. So we're going to say if somebody has possession, the next state they could transition to, well, can they transition to being in possession? Well, no, because they already have possession of the ball. So there is a zero probability that they'd go from a possession to a possession. Now, again, you could replace this with a pass or something like that. Now we would say, okay, if team A has the possession, they have a 40% probability of taking a two point. If A has the possession, they have a 30% probability of taking a three point. And then for the A possession, they also have a 30% chance of turning it over. So what we're gonna do is make sure that all of these values sum to one. Now the reason that has to happen is because always your probabilities must sum to one. If they're below one or over one, your probabilities are going to be wrong. So then if we were to look at this again, we could kind of think of it as another way. So now we're going to also look at the next one. If team A takes a two point shot and we're just going to assume they made it, what would happen? Well, they wouldn't maintain possession. They wouldn't be able to take a second two point. They wouldn't be able to take a three point. It's not really a turnover because it, they didn't lose the ball or anything like that but now team B has possession of the ball. At that point, we'll then need to evaluate. So I took the shot, let's just assume I made it, and now team B has the ball. Team B couldn't magically make a two point just because I made a two point. That doesn't happen. They would first have to get the ball, then they could make their two point. 
So again, these must all sum to one. So here we have the same thing as a three. So I took a three, I made the three. Now team B has the ball. Then you would do the same thing for the opponent, right? Same kind of thing. Now you'll notice that some of these numbers are like inverted, right? Over here versus here, but these will all be the same. Now again, you can use whatever probabilities that you find or you come up with, that's totally fine. So we look up where we're at and where we think the next transition is going to be. So over here we have shooting percentage. We have A shooting a two point, A shooting a three point, and then B at a two and B at a three, and these are their probabilities. Now again, these ones do not need to sum to 100 because the probability of them making a two point, we're just gonna assume is 50%, and the probability of them making a three point is 35%. So again, it's up to you to try and figure that out. Uh, you can use whatever numbers you want. Down here on the right though, we're gonna go ahead and be able to track the final score for A and B. It'll decide who's the winner, and then we can get some basic stats that we can use to try and look at information for other bets or possibilities on elaborating on this model. So in here, again, this is just a very simple table where you're gonna basically have whatever's in this column is also gonna be transposed being on this as a row. If you wanna do this quickly, you would write out your column Go ahead and copy it, and then when you copy it, you're going to go ahead and hit Control C, and then when you go to Paste, you'll go ahead and go to Paste Special, and then inside Paste Special, you're going to be able to see something that says Transpose. Now that we're in here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what we're doing in the game simulation. So in the game simulation here, I am going ahead and running it 101 times, as you can see there. So that means that there's going to be 101 transitions. So we're gonna start out and just assume that team A won the tip off and that is gonna occur in the first possession. So they have the possession, right? So the initial state is that they have a possession. Now I'm gonna generate a random number and then that random number is gonna go ahead and look up this information. Now here is a very complicated formula and what it's doing is it's trying to look up basically where does this fall? Does this fall over here? Does this fall over here? So it's doing all kinds of calculations. Now this is gonna be in the actual description of the video, or you can go ahead and hit pause and then type this out yourself, but I would probably just take it from the description. And again, that's gonna be populating into D15. So now you'll see all these strike throughs. That's just because I have this set up to calculate manually. Every time I hit F9, it's gonna recalculate. Now in here, we're gonna have this formula. Now this formula is going ahead and evaluating what is this? What, you know, what is the value that's in here? And if so, let's go ahead and look it up. So here, right, we're gonna look at this. If it's a three point, go ahead and look up the three point probability. A three point probability is gonna be uh, that they've got a 35% chance to make it. Let's generate that and then see if it is less than that. If so, they made the three. If not, they didn't make the three, so on and so forth. So we can keep flipping these through and see different things happening. Now B is gonna do the same thing. It's gonna now evaluate and say, oh, okay, was this a team B event or a team A event? If it's team B, we can go ahead and check the probabilities here. Then for the scores, it's just gonna start summing these scores up. So down here, you're gonna see that it is gonna be a summation of A plus A prior, right? So if they scored two points out the gate and then they made a three, well, then this would become five. And the same thing happens for when we're calculating out for score B. Now, as a reminder for these bigger and more complex formulas, I'm gonna go ahead and put those in the description. So don't need to worry about that. But what you're gonna do is write these formulas out. And again, we're just assuming here that A is starting with the possession. Now, if you wanna come up with a randomizer, you can do that as well. Or if you just wanna make it basic and say, you know what, team A is always gonna have the ball first, and then we'll go from there. So here you can see what happens. A has a possession, they have a random number of 5%. Uh, they go ahead and falls into the next state, which is gonna be a two point. So no points have been scored. So we went from A having the ball to A taking a shot. Now that they took the shot, what is the probability that they're gonna go ahead and make the shot and turn it over? Well, there's 18% here. So then they're gonna go ahead and next state is gonna be B now has the ball because team A made a basket. So then the points go up. So then here, this is also showing again the accumulation, the total score so far. 
So then the next state is going to be team B has the ball. And our random value is going to be 44%. Now that is going to fall and match into that they took a three-point shot, right? So here we still have team A only has two points. Well, they took the three-point shot. Here is the 39%. And now A has possession of the ball because the team made the basket, as you can see here. So now it transitions states. Now the other team has the ball. And we're going to do this back and forth, back and forth, all the way down. Now here you can see that there's a possession, and then there's a turnover. And then there's a possession, and then there's a three-point shot. But they didn't make the three-point shot, so these values didn't change. And then there's another shot, and then there's a possession change, so they didn't get the rebound and things like that. So you can follow this all the way through and look down at the bottom that this outcome for these imaginary teams would have been 14 to 31 after 101 transitions. So up here, if we look at these stats, again, you have 14 to 31. That means that whatever we were estimating at, that team B is gonna go ahead and be the winner. Then here are our team stats. So again, you can kind of gut check these numbers against what you see the team that you're betting on. Now, again, this is very useful for betting quarters, halves, prop bets and things like that. Um, please understand though that 101 transitions is not enough, right? So if you have a possession of a ball, there's a lot of things that can happen in a single possession. So you want to account for those probabilities within your transition matrix, which again is here. And again, what we're saying is if A has possession, what are the possible outcomes of the next state? So this is how you build out the transition. Here's some shooting percentages that we'll go ahead and calculate out did they or did they not make the basket? Here's your basic game statistics that you can use to kind of gut check, and then your simulator. So again, these are gonna be the valuable and crucial things that you wanna figure out is the probabilities and these probabilities as well, because setting this up is pretty simplistic and it's quick enough that you can go ahead and spin it up fast and just run simulation after simulation. If you want, you can add VBA and then have it run through tons of scenarios hundreds of thousands if you want to come up with a much broader distribution of events. So like I said, that is a Markov chain. It's not overly complicated conceptually, right? We're just changing states or positions of the ball if you want as well, um, or the puck or anything like that. So hopefully that wasn't too complicated. I know that the spreadsheet itself is very complicated, but the concept of a Markov chain hopefully was not. Again, we're transitioning from one state to another or one event to another event that is possible. So hopefully you can use this to build out good player props or first quarter, first half, things like that. Now I wouldn't do something like this for a full game because it gets extremely complex when you try and evaluate for an entire game. However, it can be very useful in smaller segments. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach me in the unabated discord as VT. You can reach me on X at wagered on tilt, or you can leave a comment down below and I will respond as quickly as I can. If you find this information useful, helpful, or think it might be beneficial for someone else, please like and share the video. That way it gets around and everybody can get the information that they need. If you like the kind of content that I do provide, feel free to subscribe. That is it from me today. Until next time, be wagering.